When we talk about a table in statistics, we're usually talking about what we call a frequency distribution. So a frequency distribution lists each category of data and the number of occurrences, in other words, the frequency, for each category of data. Reasons for constructing frequency distributions. They help us summarize large data sets. They help us gain some insight into the nature of the data. And they give us, and they give us a basis for constructing important graphs. Here's an example of constructing a frequency distribution. So the data below represent the color of M&Ms in a bag of plain M&Ms. We're going to construct a frequency distri distribution for the color of the plain M&Ms. In other words, someone dumped out a bag of plain M&Ms and went through one by one and wrote down the colors of each of the M&Ms in the bag. So here's our data again. To construct our frequency distribution, we're basically just going to make a table that lists all the categories for the data, in this case the different colors, and then we're just going to go through this list of data and put a tally mark in each category as we go through the list. And when we're done with that, we'll count up the frequencies for each color. In other words, how many M&Ms of that color were in the bag. So if we went through and did our tallies, that's what we would end up with. And now we can count the frequencies for each one. Brown would have 12, yellow would have 10, and so on. Red would have 9, orange 6, blue 3, and green 5. So our frequency distribution is actually the list of colors and the frequencies for each one. Now another type of table we can create is a relative frequency distribution. And the relative frequency, instead of being the count of how many values are in each category, it's the proportion of values within each category. So to find the relative frequency for a specific category, we take the frequency for that category and divide it by the sum of all the frequencies. In other words, the sum of all the frequencies means the total number of observations that were in our data set. Sometimes we want to represent relative frequencies in percentage form. So in this case, the formula is the same. So we take the category frequency and divide by the total number of observations. And then to get the percentage form, we just multiply that by 100%. So a relative frequency distribution lists each category of data and then gives the relative or the percentage frequency instead of the count. Here's an example of creating a relative frequency distribution. So we're going to construct a relative frequency distribution of the color of plain M&Ms using the frequency distribution that we already had from the prior example. Here was the information that we got from tallying up the M&Ms of each color. Now to find our relative frequencies, we need the total of all the frequencies. In this case, we need to know the total number, total number of M&Ms that were in the bag. So that's our first step. If we add up all these frequencies, we get 45. So there were 45 M&Ms in the bag. Now to get our relative frequencies, we just take each category frequency and divide it by our total, which is 45. So our first one is going to be 12 divided by 45, which gives us approximately 0.2667. For our next one, we would divide 10 by 45, 
then divide 9 by 45, 6 by 45, divide 3 by 45, and divide 5 by 45 to get the rest of our relative frequencies. Once you have all these calculated, you can check your answer by adding up all of the relative frequencies. And it should come out to be 1 or something very close to it. Sometimes with rounding error, you might come out with a 0.99 or a 1.01, 1 .01, but it should be very close to 1. Now to get our percentage frequencies, we're just going to take the values that we got for our relative frequencies and multiply each one by 100%. And how much the values are rounded depends a lot on what you're going to do with them. In this example, I rounded the percentages to the nearest tenth of a percent. Again, you can check your answers here by adding up your percentage frequencies, and they should add up to 100% or something very close to it. Now, one place that we can use relative frequency distributions or relative frequency graphs is if we're comparing two data sets, especially if the two data sets have different total frequencies. So here's a case we have data for two different years, 1990 and 2006, representing the marital status of US residents 18 years of age or older. And the reason that we would use relative frequencies here is that if we get our total number of US residents for 1990 and for 2006, we're going to have different totals. You can even see by looking at, at these two columns with just the, just the frequencies that it's a little hard to compare them. It looks like, just looking at this, that the widowed stayed about the same from 1990 to 2006, but if you consider that our totals are different, that's not really the case. We need to get the relative frequency distributions for both of these two years. So again, the first thing we need in order to calculate relative frequencies is the total of all the frequencies. So the total for 1990 is 181.9 and the total for 2006 is 219.7. So again, you can see these two totals are quite a bit different. Now for 1990, we're going to divide each category frequency by the total for that year, which was 181.9. Now for 2006, instead of dividing by 181.9, we have to divide by the total for this year, which was 219.7. And again, looking at the relative frequencies gives us a different picture of our two distributions. Remember if we looked at the regular frequencies it looked like widowed had increased slightly from 1990 to 2006, which it did in actual count, but percentage it actually decreased from 7.6 percent down to 6.3 percent. The same thing is true of the married category because in actual numbers the frequency increased from 112.6 million to 127.7 million, but the percentage of the total decreased from 61.9% down to 58.1%.